Hey guys, welcome to the Max Invest YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the valuations that we can do for Ethereum and how the Ether token gets value. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. It would be much appreciated. Also, remember nothing in this channel is financial advice and you should always do your own research. So, it's inherently difficult to value cryptocurrencies because it is quite difficult to value new industries. We know in 2001 with the dot-com bubble it was very difficult to value a lot of the tech stocks and this resulted in some major upsides and some major downsides to these tech stocks. Cryptocurrency is very similar and a lot of people are still getting their head around how do they value it, how do they discover the price and what the prices should be of these cryptos for the long term. As a direct result, cryptocurrencies have been very very volatile since their inception and a lot of people really don't know how to value them. However, I do want to say it is not impossible to value cryptocurrencies and especially in the DeFi space where cryptocurrencies actually earn revenue and they accrue value in numerous ways, there are many possible ways and many different ways to value cryptos. In today's video, I'm going to take a look at a few of the different types of ways to value cryptocurrencies, how they acquire their value, and if any of these are valid ways. I don't have the magic answers in this video and you can make your own judgments for yourself. In today's video, we're going to be specifically talking about Ethereum and its native token, which is called Ether. I'm going to go through a few different ways that Ether actually gets value on the Ethereum network. These ways are protocol generated revenue, staking, collateralization, and utility. Companies accrue share value through paying out a portion of their earnings. While Ethereum also does technically pay out a portion of its protocol generated fees, which are earnings, Ethereum gets value in a range of other ways like staking, utility and collateralization. As a direct result of this, the Ether tokens should have more demand for them than company shares. When you want to buy something off Amazon, you never pay with Amazon shares, you pay with real money. On the Ethereum network, a lot of people will actually pay with Ether, which will give the Ethereum token a lot more value than, say, traditional finance companies. Since Ethereum has a lot more demand drivers for its token, in my personal opinion, I do believe the Ether token has the potential to go very, very high in its price. So, let's get into a few of these different valuation methods for the Ether token. One way in which Ether accrues value is through smart contracts. Certain smart contracts require Ether to be paid in exchange for something. Some smart contracts can use other methods of payment. So when you're using a smart contract, you could use USDC, which is a simple digital dollar on the Ethereum network, which is just pegged to the dollar and you could use this. However, this will still cost a fee that is paid in Ethereum. So whenever you're using a smart contract on the Ethereum network, you'll need to pay in something. This could be with Ether, this could be in USDC, USDC, this could be in WBTC, and this could be in a range of different methods. However, when you're paying with Ether, this is a lot cheaper and easier to do so on the Ethereum network. As such, this gives users an economic incentive to pay with Ether. Let's go through some examples. If you wanted to buy on the Ethereum network an NFT, so this is just digital art, and you wanted to buy someone else's digital art and have ownership over this, that would require a smart contract and this would most likely be paid in the Ether token. Therefore, individuals would need to buy the Ether token and then buy the NFT with the Ether token, driving up demand for the token and increasing its price. Also, if you don't really connect with NFTs, this can be used for anything. Let's just say you want to buy a deed for a house on the Ethereum network, so what you're doing is you're literally buying a house. Well, it'd be a lot more cheap to use the Ether token to buy that house on the network. Of course, you could use USDC, you could even use digital gold, and the Ethereum network actually allows you to use any form of payment to do that. However, many people will be incentivized on the Ethereum network to use Ether, driving up to demand for Ether and this should therefore push up the price. Generally, the more individuals that are using Ethereum, that are using smart contracts, the more Ether that will be purchased for these smart contracts and the higher the price will go. This is just one way in which it accrues value. The next way in which Ethereum actually generates revenue is very similar to companies. Companies generate earnings and they generate revenue. Cryptocurrency in the DeFi space does the exact same thing. All DeFi services like Aave, Compound, Maker, they all generate revenue and 
then the Ethereum network also generates revenue. So, every time a transaction is made on the Ethereum network, a fee is generated. If you want to settle value, use smart contracts, basically do anything on the Ethereum network, well, you're going to need to pay a small fee. So, June has been a quite a slow month for Ethereum, where it's basically been going down a bit in price and not too many people have been excited about it. However, during May, Ethereum generated over $1 billion in protocol generated revenue. By my estimates, by the end of the year, I believe Ethereum will generate roughly $6 to $12 billion in protocol generated revenue. This is a ton of earnings that the Ethereum network is going to be generated, and all of this will be redistributed back to liquidity providers, stakers, yield farmers, and more third parties. So, this is basically can give the Ethereum network a price to sales ratio, which we can use to value it. Basically, the formula for a price to sales ratio is going to be the yearly protocol generated revenue divided by the fully diluted market capitalization. If we take around six to twelve billion dollars for Ethereum's yearly revenue, this gives it an average price to sales ratio of 30 to 50. If we look in the traditional finance world, 30 to 50 is not too bad. It's a bit on the overvalued side. However, it's not too bad. Of course, I believe Ethereum generates revenue in a lot of other different ways, and they generate a lot more token value than, say, company shares. So I do believe 30 to 50 is historically quite undervalued for the Ethereum network. As such, the Ethereum network works much like companies, and the Ethereum circulating for fee payments, and even some of this Ethereum will be burned in EIP 1559 and that will basically add more value to the network and it should increase the network's price. If we take a look right now the price to sales ratio for Ethereum has recently spiked up this year and this is because of a little bit less activity on the network and not too many people using Ethereum and the fees going down. However if we look at what's happened to Ethereum's price to sales ratio over time it has just been on a downward slide. Of course all the way back in 2017 the price to sales ratio was around 1000 and now it sits consistently below 100 showing a lot more people are using ethereum and this is definitely a good way to value the token the next way in which the ethereum network generates value is through value staked traditional finance and traditional companies do not have this this is unique to cryptocurrencies this is because when you stake your cryptocurrency, you basically secure the network by locking up your crypto. Because you do this, you get economic rewards in the form of more Ethereum for doing so. So, roughly 5.5 million Ethereum is being staked in the Ethereum 2.0 smart contract. This represents $10 billion worth of Ethereum, a huge amount. And, of course, we can do a ratio for this. We can see the total value staked divided by the market cap. If Ethereum is sitting in around a $200 billion market cap, this gives it a ratio of 0.05. However, we must also remember Ethereum hasn't fully transitioned to proof of stake just yet. And when it does this, I do believe the value staked won't be $10 billion. Instead, it'll probably be more like $100 billion. So, how does this actually add value to the Ether token? Well, whenever Ether for is staked, it is used to secure the network and operate the protocol. As such, economic rewards will be generated in the form of more EFA. This means individuals will want to purchase EFA and stake their EFA to earn more rewards. As a direct result, more and more people will be purchasing the token in order to earn rewards. If too little EFA is being staked on the network, well then those that are staking their EFA will earn very, very high rewards, like 20% plus. And if too much is, the more EFA is staked on the network, the lower the reward will be. As a direct result, a significant amount of people are incentivized to buy the token and stake the token. Since people are incentivized to buy the token, well that means the price should appreciate. Now, the next thing I want to get into is collateralization. Ethereum is used as collateral on numerous decentralized finance protocols. These protocols could include anything like Aave and Compound and any other decentralized protocol basically. Aave and Compound are DeFi protocols for lending and loaning your cryptocurrency and there's a whole bunch of other ones like Yearn Finance which is a yield farming aggregator. Of course I'm not going to explain what these protocols do too much in the video but these are things that you can use on the Ethereum network. Now, 
When people use these DeFi protocols, and the more DeFi protocols that are launched off the Ethereum network, the more Ethereum will need to be used for collateral. This is because all of these DeFi protocols will need to have Ether as collateral when they are using it on the network. I'm not 100% sure about the use of collateral on the network, and it does get very, very confusing and hard to understand. However, from what I can understand, you do need a certain amount of Ether as collateral on all of these networks for them to operate. Right. Therefore, when more of these networks come up and more people use these networks, more EFA will need to be purchased by these networks as collateral. More EFA being purchased should basically drive up demand for EFA, and the bigger DeFi grows, the bigger the Ethereum ecosystem will grow. Also recall that a fee will need to be paid in EFA on each of these protocols, which further adds value to the Ethereum network. So, another good valuation metric, and I know there's a lot of them, is total value locked. Basically, many users will lock up their cryptocurrency into decentralized finance projects. This represents the amount of underlying supply that is being secured by a specific decentralized application. So, these are all the exact same decentralized applications we just went over. When a greater value is locked up into these protocols, this represents being more fees being generated on these networks, more Ether being used as collateral, and more trust in these systems. Inherently, the total value lock should also make the Ether network accrue a lot more value. This also leads to another ratio that we can use to value these networks, which is essentially the total value lock divided by the fully diluted market cap. We can do this on all the decentralized finance protocols like Aave, Compound, and Maker, and generally a greater than one ratio illustrates that these are undervalued. As you can see by this chart, $50 billion worth of USD is locked up in these DeFi protocols, which adds more value to the Ethereum network, directly adding value to the Ether token and pushing it up in price. As you can see, Aave, Curve Finance, Compound, Maker, these all have a ton of money locked up in them. Now, we're basically done here, but the last thing I sort of want to discuss for valuing cryptocurrencies is Metcalf's Law. What this essentially says is that the number of users squared is the value of a telecommunications network. Ethereum and the network is slightly different to telecommunications networks in quite a few different ways. However, this is an interesting thing to speculate on. As more and more DeFi users and more Ethereum users pop up, this should essentially mean the value of the network gets greater and greater according to Metcalf's Law. Now, this is an interesting thing that you can speculate on, however, I'm not so sure if it's the best thing to be used when valuing EFA. So, to conclude, individuals pay fees when using DeFi, buy Ethereum when using DeFi, collateralize using ETH, stake their ETH, and lock up their EFA. Basically, all of these different methods result in the Ethereum token having tons and tons of value and appreciating in value fundamentally as the network grows and becomes stronger. Of course, investors speculating on the future and buying and holding assets with actual, without actually using the networks also appreciates the price. And a lot of people have been doing this for cryptocurrency recently, which does mean the price is quite variable. However, every asset should trend towards its fundamental value and I believe the Ethereum network has a fundamental value a lot greater than it is right now in the future, so I do think it should generally trend up. Of course, if you enjoy the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers and it would be much appreciated. Thanks for watching the video.